Hello everyone, my name is Anthony Shivkumar and in today's video, I want to talk about how we can organize our SMB components. Um, this is something that I personally have been um, thinking about for a while and their SMB components are so small that if you don't organize them properly, um, you can it can be very inefficient to work with SMD components, uh, especially when you have, say, an ohm office lab like this <clears throat> and you don't have, you know, a lot of room space. So one way that I have figured out that works for me, I'm not sure it will work for everybody, but this is the way I organize my SMD components, is uh, to put them into a folder structure. Uh, and that's exactly what I'm going to talk about today as to how I organize my SMD components. And uh, hopefully, you know, it might help you as well. Now, if you have through old parts, generally they're bigger and they can fit into, you know, a small cabinet kind of uh, a structure, like something like this that I have over here, where you have, you know, these uh, Acro Mills um, plastic container and you can, you know, put them into this container over here. And they're great for, you know, having through hole parts. Uh, there's nothing wrong with having, you know, this type of container for bigger components. But when your components are, you know, super small, microscopic then it's then you know you really uh cannot you know put them into these containers at least i i find them very hard uh, and also you have a lot of especially if it is depending on what you're designing say for example if you're designing say a mosfet um, not a mosfet but say uh, a motor driver there's going to be a bunch of capacitors and resistors uh, if you're designing a radio module, there's going to be a lot of, you know, capacitors and inductors and each one would have different shape and size. And then, then you would have, you know, different, um, what do you say, uh, uh, the component values itself would be different. Uh, and you'll soon run out of containers, in my opinion, um, because it, you can have only so much, you know, physical storage in this sense. So you, running out of this type of uh, space is with, when you're designing a lot of uh, PCBs. Uh, can be you'll just run out of space very quickly and that's something that also um, you know started to make me uh, consider how I need to organize my small little components so for through hole parts these are great you can you know batch few of them together as well but when it comes to SMD I don't find this as a convenient way of you know storing um, components What I have instead is a file based system. And now what I use is something called, um, uh, these are like these big files that I have over here right now. And I'm gonna show you how I organize my components. And it's very similar to the way I organize my components in my computer. So when I'm designing say my um, my motor driver and I need to you know select a MOSFET or select a, um, a capacitor or a resistor, I go into a folder and I'm looking at the values that I have, which is in ascending order and it's based on the shape and size uh, and the way it's structured in my computer is also the same way I structure it physically. So for me, this is a very nice way to organize my components and I'm just going to show you how it looks like underneath. So this is a big file. Um, you can get uh, what I have over here. I put links below so that you can, you know, if you want to have something of this sort or, you're, or you feel like, you know, you have a uh, you want to improve on how you can store your SMD components. I'll give all the links of what I'm using below. And this is a file and the make of this file is is called KSET. I think I got them once from Staples or from Walmart. Uh, you can also get them from Amazon. Uh, so this is how the folder structure looks like under the under the hood. And what I have over here are these binders, which you get from Amazon base, Basics for 5 to $10. You can even get um, this folder for around $20. And it can really save you a lot of time in terms of organization. So what I do over here is this is all my capacitors. And in my capacitors, I put, if I buy from DigiKey, I basically put that whole thing into the folder, into these cellophane papers and um, they are they allow me to you know protect the components and the reason why this is important for me is because not only do i have the capacitor name the voltage and uh, the size of the of the um, component but i also need to make sure that i have the component name and the number 
Uh, and this is important because if I want to say get an IBIS model or a or a or a or a digital model, a spice model of the component, I can go in here and type this out and go to the manufacturer's website and get this. This is important for me. Whereas if I have those, if I put them into these containers, a small little containers. Uh, it seems a little difficult for me to store a lot of this, uh, whereas in a file-based system, you know, like putting them in a, in this file or in the self and paper, you know, it's flat and I, I don't have to fold anything and it's just nice and clean. And the way I've organized it is that the smallest number, it's like zero, this is 0 0.47 uh, picofarad, that's a capacitor, it's 50 volts uh, and it's a 0402, that's the size of this particular capacitor. So as I keep increasing, as I keep flipping the, the, the pages, it increases in, in, in capacitance. And if they have the same capacitance, then I basically make sure that the smallest size is first. So 0402 will probably, it will definitely be smaller than say uh, a 0603 um, size capacitor. So there will be a one pick of farad 50 volts, uh, 0402. Uh, this is um, 1.5 pick of farad, 0402. 115 power pick of farad 042 and then i keep going around there right and if it's thick you know this is a, a thick this has got say around thousand uh, capacitance or uh, capacitors in here um it still fits nicely in here now granted that this particular folder that i have is small so that's the reason why i bought another one and i'll show you how i'm going to basically assemble it right here in this video so this is what i have for my capacitance and then i have another divider kind of a thing that allows me to have my um, resistance. So capacitance and resistance are pretty much the most um, common elements or components that you would be using in almost every PCBs that you use, uh, that you design. So that will, that's gonna take up your, your, the bunch of your, um, you know, the amount of SMD components in a nutshell. Um, and of course, even inductors and then your ICs and all that, but generally the capacitance in, in, in resistance and it's not just the number of components, it's the size, right? For example, your one PCB, one of, if you're designing, say, a radio module, you need to match, you know, your capacitance and inductance for your LC network. Uh, and then for your for your PDNs, you might have, you know, a couple of other capacitance. So the values might be different. Uh, the shape and size might be different. And, and, and it's very easy, you know, to suddenly have, like, you know, 30 different capacitors and 30 different resistors in that sense. Um, and then you, you, you can run out of space. So this allows me to, you know, not easily run out of space because you can buy this from Amazon again. I bought like 500 of these for like, uh, I don't know, $20, these transparent cellophane papers. So this is all my resistance. Same thing for resistance, the smallest value. So this is a zero ohm resistance. Uh, this is a zero ohm resistance. This is a 0 0.06 ohm resistance. So they both are zero ohm resistance. Then the size of this is, um, this should tell me this is a zero, no. This is, uh, so sometimes the manufacturers do not necessarily describe the actual shape and size. So then what I'll have to do is take this number, put it on the computer and see what the shape and shape of the, of the size of the, of the, um, um, of the resistor is. So uh, I don't have that in, on, it's not written over here. It says a thin film resistor, 1.8 volts ohm. Um, whereas uh, when I buy from DigiKey, they generally tell you it's a uh, 0805. I think this is also 0805. So this is bigger than say this, say if this is a 0603, then this will be bigger than this, the same value. So this is the second page. So it's easy for me to find and search components as well. So it's very well organized in a folder stru structure. It resembles a dictionary in that sense, right? So same thing over here. And then um, after my resistance, I have my inductance. I'm not labeled it, but you could, you know, the divider because I, I mean, Let's, let's be, let's be honest, right? There's only like, in, in terms of a lump circuit model, you got resistors, capacitors, and inductors, right? So that's what I have, you know, capacitance, resistance, and inductance. Uh, so this part will be, uh, oh, and in this particular case, actually I have diode over here because uh, uh, I don't use inductors a lot uh, for at least for the circuits that I'm designing currently, um, which I will be using once I start to design SMPS and uh, SMPS, to, uh, you know, switch mode power regulators. Um, when you're designing radio modules, you'll re require uh, inductance. Uh, but diodes take up also, you know, there are a lot of different types of diodes. So this in this particular case, these are all LEDs. There's red LED, green LED for different shapes and different size. Uh, LEDs, if you're designing circuits, you, you'll always need to have some LED for indication, making sure, you know, hey, you know, I switched on the power, I can see my power on. So different LEDs for different sizes and different, you know, different colors. That's, that's what I have over here. 
and then I have another divider uh, and here I have my crystals which is another part of you know what you would have when you do your uh, when you when you when you're designing my when you're designing say a microcontroller or even um, 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 a processor you would have to have you know say uh, in this particular case it's a 32.768 crystal crystals will have different shapes and size so it's basically oscillators um, so then yeah so that's another part of uh, what I have over here and then and here I have Shosky diodes or norm or Zener diodes in this particular case. These are like real, um, it's not a, it's not an LED. Even LED is technically a diode. It's a light emitting diode. But I've categorized it differently from, say, a, li a diode that does not have, it's a two terminal, you know, without any light emitting capabilities. So those are, this would be like my normal, you know, Shotsky diode or my Zener diodes over here. So these are all Shotsky diode, um, the general purpose diode. A general purpose diode and, and they're based on um and in this particular case they are based on so in in a diode case the way i organize them is based on you know what's their voltage capacity so the smallest so this is a 10 volt capacity this is a 10 volt capacity uh this should be a, this is a 30 volt capacity so whenever you buy a diode it will give you the the, the voltage rating so the smallest voltage rating will be will be in the in you know will be in in the front and the bigger voltage rating will be at the back uh, and here I get into general purpose diode and here I have an inductor so I, I don't have a break but that's how I basically organize my, my folder over here so I, I this is how I think is very very uh, helpful for me because now I can slam in a lot more components into this into this folder structure and you can get and and you know and if you're running out of space you can buy another folder right like it's easier to buy folders is cheap it's it's really inexpensive and it helps you be organized uh, now in this particular case it's um, you know it's kind of like getting a little full and i did buy a bigger folder to to make it more you know to uh, to put more components but even then if you get a folder like this a case which is a which is a very nice folder because it kind of expands based on your capacity i might have to squash it a little bit or squish it a little bit and then you can zip it And it's this nice little thing and then you basically you know slide slide it into your shelf uh, and when you're soldering again you know you bring it up and then you're uh, ready to go so that's you know and it's this small little thing where you can put it on your shelf it's just part of your bookcase you can be part of your uh, library and it's uh, it's just a file right like so it, it and any and they you find a lot more storage uh, general purpose storage for just normal use in any um, in any store uh, that deals with stationary kind of things to store something of this sort compared to say uh, your acro mills you know uh, um, what do you say small little plastic containers let me show you what i have on my computer to show you how what i physically have in here uh, represents what i have in my in my computer so so in here, when I go and design my components, I generally use um, Altium or you, whatever PCB designing tool that you use. Uh, now, this is not the most organized folder structure. I'm still working on it because when I first started, it was all over the place. And then as over time, as I started to build more circuits, I had more components and it became a little bit more tedious. Uh, and that's when I started to, you know, organize my components in such a in, in a more um, organized and structured manner. So let's take, take for example capacitor. So the way I have basically have the high level comp components is I basically have labeled them as data converters, my analog digital converters, uh, breakout boards, um, something that you know I'm designing. Um, then there's camera sensors, there's capacitors, then there's power connectors. So based on the type of component that I'm using, I should have a high level folder of it. Based on, so basically it'll be a capacitor, it'll be a logic gate or an MCU or a memory or a resistor or an oscillator. And, and it kind of, you know um uh, fits well into you know the folder structure that i have uh, that i just showed you so let's take for example the capacitors because uh, it's a good example to show capacitors um, or even resistors so in the beginning when i was doing this folder structure i was putting the name of the manufacturer which is kind of a dumb idea um and i generally should be putting either the value or just put cap now there's is there certain reasons why you might want to have though i'm in the capacitor folder to have a cap in the beginning it helps because when you are um, in a PCB design tool and you're searching for components, uh, you like to have all your capacitors in uh, one um, in 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 all together 
because if you put 0 0.1, 0 0.1 could be a, a farad, it could be a henry, it could be uh, a resistance and, and you can get confused between what that 0 0.1 is. But if you put a cap, uh, if you start your folder structure with a cap and if it comes to organizing, you know, when, when you have all your components bundled together, um, you know, these are capacitors. It's just, you know, a naming convention that, you know, might help you in terms of, you know, searching and being organized. And then it's the type of capacitance, which is sermaric, a sermanic, um, the value is 0.1 microfarad, and then the size 0.0201s, uh, 0603, 0603 is 1210. Uh, uh, and based on the size, uh, it, we, we, and, and the farad value, uh, it's structured. And it's very synonymous to what I have in my folder structure. So that's how I basically have been uh, uh, utilizing or rather uh, figuring out how to organize uh, my components. So what I'm going to show you is how you can do this for yourself as well is uh, a new case at folder. Now the difference between what I have and what I recently bought, I bought this for around $20, $30, I think. Uh, and, and this is bigger than this. It's slightly bigger than this. And I'll show you what I mean by bigger. So this is a new folder same company same type but it's a lot thicker and and because it's a lot thicker it's a lot broader uh, it's i think four inches uh, it allows me to basically uh, put in more uh, components so now i can put in some ic's um, things like you know my pre drivers maybe even my uh, mosfets uh, or my um, uh, not just passive components but you know like ic uh, integrated circuits as well and and they are a little thicker than say a 0201 um, capacitor so the thicker they are and as you pile them up it's going to you know take a lot it's going to you know sandwich over it's going to be a, it'll it'll be a start to get bulky very quickly so this big structure you know can uh, this big four file structure can uh, help me out and if i run out of space i can buy another one so it's much easier to buy a file cabinet than buying you know more and more uh, plastic containers so so what i generally do and once you have basically put your folder like this so say for example if i get a component say from NXP um, in this particular case I have my ICs in here um, I'm just gonna open this over here so this is uh, the KV5X processor in here um, so something of this sort you know I want to keep them safe now I could put them anywhere I want to but if I just put them in this folder like this and you know, just label them XYZ um, this may not be the best way to put things I mean you may not want to put your IC because it can get bulky uh, I might have to organize something of this sort when they come in containers like this uh, so in this, I might put in a box maybe or in a, another place. Um, but as I mentioned, like depending on if it's a smaller component, uh, you could put them in a four file structure like this. And if it's bulky, this is when you get sample products. Um, I generally might put it, put them, you know, in a, in a, in a box of something of this sort, you know, so I can, you know, stack them all together in a box like this because it's bulkier. So depending on the shape and form of your of your container on which your AC is coming in, this might help or this might not help. So nevertheless, so this is what I have over here. Um, and uh, if you like this video, I highly recommend you to subscribe. And uh, and until next time, take care.